again with my best mate from down under Tom and he is going to be oh sorry I should say Tom Jelly um Tom Gailey <laughs> from <laughs> Big Picture Skiing again uh how you been Tom yeah really good really good yeah best best mates now are we <laughs> <laughs> best mates now <laughs> from a distance that's no, good <laughs> from a distance no it was, was it was really great you sent that video of uh Hugh who we're going to use as an example today um, just to to look at his skiing, he's he's emailed you requesting some help um, with certain things. It just sounds like this is a good case to maybe take a like what seems like a skier who's got a lot of information needs some help. Just bring it down to maybe one or two simple things. So, yeah, good way um, to put it. I think touch. Tom. Yeah, good way to put it because this guy is you know he's in his sixties. He's got, obviously got a hell of a lot of experience within the ski industry. The guy's, you know, been a master skier for 15 years. He's been within the, the ski and coaching area as well. So there's not much you're going to be to teach this guy that he, that he won't already know. And certainly from the information I had, and I can even maybe just drop a screenshot on here of his email. And you can see how long it is and how he's able to break down precise movements. Now, both Tom and yeah. I, who both come from the, the field of um, physics and biomechanics, yes, we could equally now get really absorbed in this, couldn't we, Tom? But I think we both yeah. decided, hang on, stop. Let's look at his video. Maybe we all should do that first and take a different approach. So let's yeah. see the video. Okay, great. Here in slow motion. So a few things. So he's on, it looks like a slalom ski. The snow looks like pretty soft in places. Um, really kind of, you know, the ski is able to, he knows what a carving ski feels like, right? There's not really a lot of skidding going on, um, which is pretty good. One thing he mentions is uh, his coaches are saying he has a dead spot at the top of the turn. So he's sort of asking about that. So this part, so that'd be the middle third, last third. It's this top part. He's, um, he's curious about why is there a dead spot. Two, he's, uh, he's been told he needs a narrower stance. And then in the email, he goes on further into saying he's trying to do certain things with his both adductors, he's pronating, supinating. There's a lot of uh, what we were referring to here is like there's a lot of information that seems to be going around in his head that he's trying to solve these two kind of, we'll call them simple things, early pressure and and a narrow stance with with balance against the outside ski like would you agree paul they're the kind of two things we're maybe maybe looking at here to help this gear improve yeah absolutely and really that's it really he's hit the nail on the head because we both agree as well i think we agree with his coaches that narrow stance um, would be a great simplified way of moving forward. But perhaps, Tom, we might have to say narrower stance at a drifted dynamic parallel turn, for example, or just a normal parallel turn, for example, would be the first port of call. Because I think people do find narrow stance challenging sometimes when they're used to racing, you know, the, 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 especially in this case where that inside leg has been definitely used as an over like a second fulcrum point throughout the turn so yeah, yeah underneath here yeah exactly and and it, so I've got you know I, I like using this guy Raymond Zenhausen who won gold in the slalom in Sochi and he's like six foot six so if anyone's going to get caught on the inside ski Raymond is because his center of mass is so much more inside than a lot of other people because of how tall and long his legs are but if we have a look at the difference in the stance with here, like it's huge. And, and with Raymond being narrower in his stance, he can't afford to be on the inside ski here, even with all this inclination. So, so the narrow stance is, is forcing him to reflexively balance more here. Whereas Hugh, with his wider stance here and, and sort of not really what I'd say, not feeling that well for the outside ski, center of mass, base of support, it's pretty much, 
it's, it's very close underneath him. Whereas Raymond, his distance to that, that inside foot is so far, he can't afford it. So it makes me think of, uh, I remember being, you know, privileged enough to work with one of the ex Canadian national team coaches. And he said, Tom, early season, when we get a new athlete joining the, the Canadian national team, we make them do hours and hours of like narrow feet skiing, like basic level, basic parallel, sort of picking up the performance over and over again, because in a narrow stance, you have to be on the outside ski. So the, I think that would be our first suggestion is, is listen to the coaches back off the level of skiing and, and get narrow because this wide stance, you're using it as a crutch here. And so you, you're, you're having to fall on it continuously. We'll watch it all happen again here. Whereas if we compare it with Raymond, in the same moment of the turn, like the inside foot is just drastically different in terms of where it is relative. So he's, he's got to learn to feel that outside ski. Paul, anything you exactly, want to add yeah. there? Yeah, no, absolutely. And you see the byproduct of falling on the inside ski, how that knee on his outside leg gets shoots forward and it gets into a really uncomfortable, dangerous looking position on, on and yeah. it's a cluster, it's on every turn. And you can see that we've got the idea of, you know, when you feel that outside ski not gripping, you can see how he even pushes harder. And we said he's sort of like trying to bash the snow to pieces. Yep. And it's a lot of the times because the two yeah. the center of mass and the outside ski are moving away from each other. And you feel it. You feel yep. it as a good skier. Yep. You know something's not right. And you start to panic. So you push harder. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bring up that point, that moment you're talking about. So say we look at the two skiers transitions. Um, Paul's referring to uh, like a, a sort of, flexed down i think it's the next turn this side seems to be more so the the body is sort of ending broken, up collapsing down yeah which is his broken ankle side so his, his left leg he has broke his ankle so there may be a very good reason mm -hmm. you know we we are not privileged to ski with hugh yet so we can't speak to him directly but without doing a, a mobility assessment etc face to face it's, it's sometimes difficult to know if there's some underlying issues that are affecting Hugh's skiing. So yeah. all we can do, Tom, is look at the basic fundamentals. The body position tells me something from the thoracic spine, from how he's, he's, his spinal mechanics are in the transition of the turn as well. We talked about this. Like the way we're looking at things, this is just Paul and I's own perspective and, and every coach will have their own perspective and, and that's good. Um, it's just a way that you view and understand things. So if you take for a moment, think about uh, if you had a broken left ankle, an old broken left ankle, at this moment in the turn, like you could almost say it looks like this ankle is, is sort of a little bit weak or, or avoiding being loaded. It's a lot more load, it seems, through, through this foot, like that foot's being left behind, whereas you can just see the snow on Raymond's ski, like, his whole body is directed into like the center of that ankle joint and the center of that ski. So it's all really lined up. Whereas this him, uh, Hugh looks more like it's going to this foot. Yeah. Um, so that's a, it's a really good, good point you bring up there. Um, but I think that transition is, is suffering just because of, of a few things that the, the not being on the outside ski, rushing the turn, trying to really crush the snow. I mean, he, even mentions that he's trying to drive, like get the knees inside to touch the snow. I'm yes. pretty sure Raymond is not not thinking about that at all. You can see the whole body is in concert. There's no forced, like look at the knees between the two skiers. Like there's a definite forced look here, whereas Raymond is just following a balanced feeling inside the turn. And this is not just uncommon with... Um you know, you're picking here a very high-end skier. Um, World Cup, we could pick one of our coaches who is similarly aged um, to Hugh. And this is our coach going down a very steep black run and um, doing a long turn. And actually we see very much similarity. But yeah, like like there's the, like uh, one of your coaches, Gunter, 
like see his, his stance is quite narrow here and he's got this inclined position, little bits of angulation, but in this stance with your center of mass over here, you cannot afford to be on your inside ski, but already our, our friend Hugh with this wide stance here, his center of mass, like his body will know that he can use this as a, as, as too much of a crutch. And, you know, people, people maybe have seen that this car video I did where I use an exercise like a, a where you actually use your inside foot like this, you use it as, as an exercise to help your body feel you get this much edge angle because that makes the ski bend. But uh, Hugh is at the point now where he needs to take this crutch away, not use it anymore because he can create big edge angles, right? Like there's, he's, he's comfortable getting really far over to bend the ski. He now needs to go back to a real basic of, of, of being on the outside ski and, and really, and really sensing that and, and the narrow stance will probably help him. But here's Gunter. See, yeah. he's really disciplined. See how disciplined Gunter is in keeping the stance. Whereas see, uh, Hugh, his stance get wider and wider and wider because he's so far in, he, this foot has to travel up, travel this way to catch him. Gunter doesn't need that. And he's on, he's I mean, on a GS ski. So it's even harder yeah. to do. Oh no, that's him. They got to 190 for something 30 odd meter ski that he rides on so it's it's not easy so let's leave it let's leave it there for today so far on this analysis and in part two we'll come back and and sort of give a full summary of what we really think uh would be a good focus and and help people understand maybe maybe a common trap or path they go down for too long that can lead to someone like you getting, you know, being stuck at this level, frustrated with, with what's going on to take him to the next level. Absolutely. Let's pick that up and we'll see you soon with Ski Instructor Academy and bigpictureskiing.com. Thanks.